Today, I make the long-promised video of Jim's new house in Cambodia. I'm doing around the house first, then I'm going to go in the house. This is the laundry drying area. The laundry area. Coming around to the shower area. This is the shower area. One simply takes buckets of water. and pours it over oneself, and then gets more water and pours it over oneself while standing, wearing flip-flops on this gravel, and the laundry's in here to soak. Uh, this is the uh, anaerobic decomposition toilet put in by Sam, apparently with help from this uh, NGO in 2009. And Here's the water bucket that serves the toilet. And here is the classic squat toilet inside a uh, corrugated metal shed with a roof on it. The roof is important. And then after you've done your business, you use the scoop to pour water down the crack of your butt while massaging one's anus with the fingers of the other hand that's not holding the scoop, thereby causing the bits of poop to go away in the water rather than stay there or on one's fingers. A system I'm not real happy with, hence I use toilet paper. Which costs money, which water by and large does not. Water comes from the roof, runs down this into one of these, and is then carried by buckets to more storage containers, also coming down off the roof like so. You can tell this one's mostly empty because water has been transferred from it to the other buckets, uh, other urns. Each one of these urns holds about one cubic meter. Uh, the, the roof is big enough that it sheds something on the order of 50 to 60 cubic meters per year, all in the six month rainy season. The rest of the time it's almost totally dry. Um, so that's 60 cubic meters, give or take. My Super Tenzai water filter instant coffee. Cannot live without coffee. My beloved wife, Sam Norrell. Sam Norrell has a pomelo <laughs> on her head, the latest in Cambodian fashion, and it matches her green pajamas, I think, excellently, and inevitably looking at her iPad, which is also filming us. So once again, we are filming each other. Oh, point that at me. Here, point it down a little bit. All right. So here, I'm taking a video of Sam Merle taking a video of, of me while I'm wearing a sarong. <laughs> yes, I'm wearing a sarong. All right, it's very comfortable here. Great for going native in Cambodia. Good style, good style. Very good style. Yeah, you see? Excellent you see style. My hair? Perfect. I think it's going to be all the rage. <laughs> Sam Nang? Yeah. Hello. Hello. This is uh, Sam Merle's sister and the new baby. Mm. Yeah. Hello. Hmm? Yeah. Nyet. 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 Yeah. Nyet. Ah. No, Which sounds like right. Russian word for no. Nyet. Mm -hmm. So, Nyet. Nyet. I haven't quite got... Uh, Cambodian is full of vowel combinations and consonant combinations that I haven't wrapped my ear or my tongue around yet. I painted the stairs white, which was, I don't think, really optimal, but whatever. You always have to take your flip-flops off on the way in. Still getting used to that. Another shot of my lovely orange sarong. And coming up the stairs, there is a uh, welcome mat, essentially. Wipe your feet on that before going in. That is leftover red ribbon from the cord tying ceremony around our wrists during the marriage, so it kind of says this is a newlyweds house. Stuff drying on the rails. Steps are quite steep coming up here. Uh, but you get a great view from here. I really like that. I mean, it's not a view of much right now, but it will be once we get the garden in over here and ducks in the pond and all that kind of stuff. There's the main front door. Right, one must have an imposing front door in any culture. That seems to be universal. Notice the uh, uh, gaps to let the air in. There's no screens over that. In fact, one of the things you don't notice, notice most in a Cambodian house is that there are gaps between all the boards. 
I thought it was going to be tongue and groove or something, but no, no. There are gaps between all the boards. I'm standing here, I can feel quite a breeze coming up my sarong from underneath. Uh, and that's what it's for. It's to, to maximize the breeze. Everything about a Cambodian home is to maximize the breeze. You would think they would have more window space, but you notice the bars over the window here, that's rebar. And they're not kidding about that. Um, one of the reasons the stairs are so s steep, notice there are gaps in the boards in the walls also. One of the reasons the stairs are so steep is that up until recently they were ladders and you actually retracted the stairs when you went to sleep at night. As it is now, there's a little, a little gate, right? Nowhere as near as burglar proof as retracting the ladder. But uh, it's one of the reasons the houses are on stilts. Makes them much more resistant to burglary. Now, if all the windows were open, it would be actually quite ooh, sunny and uh, light in here. But the windows are normally kept closed. These are not really windows, they're shutters. Uh, the shutters don't really have a way to keep them open. I haven't really... I'm going to have to figure out a way. I've visited many people's houses and they don't have a shutter, something, latches, anything to keep the things open, which is really weird. Um, and so they just tend to bang closed sooner or later, or just keep banging, and so they latch them shut. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to the front door. We'll do the tour again. Uh, notice no shelves. Shelves are not a commonplace thing. That is a rolled-up bed net, a net to keep bugs away. Another one on the floor there. Everybody's sleeping in this house now. It's me, um, uh, Samnang, who you met downstairs, her husband Bao, their baby, um, the grandmother Mao, um, and when she's here, Kim Hui, who's attending school in Banambang, and Peron, who is currently in Thailand, as so many young men are, Cambodian young men, um, working for money, we're going to send him to one kind of school or another here instead. All right, we've got... Uh, suitcases that with things in them stacked up, all the bedding rolled up and put away for the day, um, altars all over the place. There's at least three altars on the property. Uh, this one is to, I don't know who it's to, but it's for uh, Sam's personal health, deities, etc. This one is for the house, and that's or for the electric service. I haven't quite figured out which, one of the two. Uh, and there's another one on the property I can get a shot of from the front door. Right here you see a red thing, a red shrine. So that's, I think, a shrine to the property deities, the land deities. And thanks for letting us live here. Uh, spirits, deities, whatever. Uh, Buddhism here is a really syncretic agglomeration of... Buddhism, the previous Hudism, Hinduism, the previous Tibet animism. It's a, it's a real mishmash. Um, but it's just all wood. Not all, not all the boards are great. You can see there's some black boards here. The black is actually sticky. It's very sappy. But what you can't quite see is that each one of these boards runs the entire length of the house. Uh, how far is that? That's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, roughly twenty-seven foot boards. Uh, and they're all continuous boards running from one end to the other, so it's hardly surprising that some of them are imperfect. How, how often do you find twenty-seven foot boards in America? I had some of the worst, sappiest bits replaced, not many of them. Um, and you know, some of the boards have other imperfections, but that's not surprising. Um, and stuff is just stacked up. There's another suitcase with stuff piled on it and more stuff piled on it. So Sam and I actually have some wardrobes. This is some kind of a family heirloom thing here that's old enough that it's been cracked and, and not fixed. And it has all sorts of historical stuff in it. And then I got my historical stuff on top of that. I didn't keep much stuff, so there's not much of mine. My new uh, motorcycle helmet, obviously. A couple of Native American Indian things that I kept, because I think they're really cool. Um, the uh, 
cloth and metal frame wardrobes that are insanely cheap and work pretty well. My bed net, which I keep up all the time because I'm either sleeping in it or lying on it and doing computer stuff, sitting on it and doing computer stuff, so I just keep it up all the time, uh, which is like considered to be crazy here, some of Sam's stuff. We've got a ceiling fan up there, but once you put the bed net up, the ceiling fan doesn't work for shit, so we're going to move that downstairs shortly. Um, and the floor fan that we just got to live inside the bed net. Then my... Pull this camera inside the bed net. And there's my computer. And I basically just sit here with the fan blowing on me and do my computer stuff. And I'm either sleeping there or sitting there or eating downstairs. Okay, so let's check downstairs just a little bit more. But that, I mean, that's the house. I got a, got a fan up here too. I will eventually have a hammock going across this this little seating area because it does get a fair breeze when the southeast monsoon or southwest monsoon comes in it's blowing from almost directly that direction which is west and southwest would be that way um, yeah so that's west south east and north is behind me Okay, right down the steps. Put on my sandals, flip-flops, whatever. Yeah, what is the sound of an approaching ninja? Flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop. All right. This is a pile of concrete, which is going to be used to make the new kitchen our refrigerator, as it were, which has a block of ice, yes, an actual block of ice, and my favorite beer, and various other things, but mostly it's ice for my beer. Uh, this is a, what do you call this, Sam? Mm -hmm. The table. In, in Piazza Kamai is called what? Piazza Kamai? Grey. 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 Yes. Grey. Alright, so a grey is something that everybody sits around on to eat. I usually sit there in that corner. Um, and why do you sit on the table? Because you'll notice the table have, has gaps in it, and so the breeze comes up from below. Maximizing the breeze is of utmost important. And we will shortly put the ceiling fan that's currently above my bed right up there, blowing down on my gray. Um, Disney culture is frickin' inescapable. All right. 